Moses' gravestone bears no name, only an old Chinese character, Mu, which means emptiness, nothing. I thought about this symbol on the right back in the train, nothingness. As a child, I had often tried to imagine nothingness. The idea of it had filled me with fear. Nothing simply cannot exist, I had always told myself. Only what's there can exist, what's real, reality. Hardly any other notion is more empty and useless when applied to the cinema. Each person knows for himself what is meant by the perception of reality. Each person sees his reality with his own eyes. One sees the others above all the people one loves. One sees the objects surrounding oneself, sees the cities and countrysides in which one lives. One also sees death, man's mortality and the transitoriness of objects. One sees and experiences love, loneliness, happiness, sadness, fear. In short, each person sees for himself life. And each person knows for himself the extreme gap that often exists between personal experience and the depiction of that experience up there on the screen. We have learned to consider the vast distance separating cinema from life as so perfectly natural that we gasp and give a start when we suddenly discover something true or real in a movie, be it nothing more than the gesture of a child in the background, or a bird flying across the frame, or a cloud casting its shadow over the scene for but an instant. It is a rarity in today's cinema to find such moments of truth, for people or objects to show themselves as they really are. That's what was so unique in Ozo's films, and above all in his later ones. There were such moments of truth. No, not just moments, long-range truth, lasting from the first image to the last. Films which actually and continuously dealt with life itself, and in which the people, the objects, the cities and the countrysides revealed themselves. Such a depiction of reality, such an art, is no longer to be found in the cinema. It was once. Move. Nothingness. What remains today.